there we go, there we go guys. I said on uh, Strava today, we're getting ready to get ready. Nice and easy, two miles today, 3K for everyone outside the US, and I wish I could go further, but I know I gotta rein it in this first week back after two weeks off, and uh, this week I'm gonna try and stay in the 10 to 20 mile range. Not gonna be easy, but I'm gonna try and keep it in that range, so just two miles easy. Uh, my thermometer, 42 degrees out, 30% humidity, so I am a little concerned. Well, listen, I actually kind of enjoy colder temperatures every now and then, and I'm a little concerned that this winter is gonna be mild in Denver, but it's like I like a little bit of snow. I'm not afraid of cold temperatures, so we'll just see how the winter turns out, but I did wear my Gooder sunglasses. Uh, I have a, a headband from Nike, headband from Nike right there, and then I got my buff, so I had the buff on right directly on my head, right on my ears, the headband on top. I probably could have just gone with the buff today, but I decided to double up just to make sure I wasn't too cold. Uh, then, yes, a little trick sometimes when it's really cold out, and if you want to listen to a podcast or a music, I actually am not afraid to wear headphones that are a little bigger and look like earmuffs. I'm gonna pause for a second. The sun is literally coming out from behind a building, and and so I need to adjust the settings on the camera. Hold on. And we're back, and we're back. Okay, I got my Solomon jacket on. Underneath the Solomon jacket, I just went with a polyester blend uh, long sleeve. I, w I got this at a race this past summer, the uh, Dirty 30 50K here in Colorado. And it's very, very, I like, I lean toward a blend when it comes to cotton and polyester. I'm, an, I'm not a fan of like straight, uh, complete polyester or uh, I don't know exactly what the blend is sometimes with dry fit shirts, but I prefer like a cotton uh, mix usually. For my gloves today, went with Trailhead, this company right here, Trailheads, uh, and I love these gloves. Like they are becoming kind of my favorite, I would say 22 degree to 45 degree gloves. They're not, they're not designed for really cold weather, but I love it because you can have your fingers free and then also pull pull this over your fingers when it gets a little chilly out or windy. This is, it's, it's basically like a wind cover for your fingers. And so I'm actually, these are becoming uh, some, some of my favorite gloves for the winter running. And then of course the Sun 2 watch, uh, Nike pants, my loose fitting like Nike pants. Uh, I use these for easy days and basically uh, dry max socks. And yes, the Nike Vimero 14s, which by the way, they felt amazing today, the Nike Vimero 14s they are I'm not gonna give you my full review right now but I will just say this much they are a workhorse shoe it's like getting a bear hug that's right that's right if you like that kind of that bear hug feel in a shoe what is that I don't exactly know but it just feels like you're really well protected in the Nike Vimero 14 I am really really bullish on these shoes I think they're gonna be a workhorse in 2019 okay that's what I was wearing today ask your questions down below about any of the uh, gear and yes the Sun is out beautiful day beautiful day to be alive to be running all right I'm off to the uh, gym get that uh, strengthening going right get that core going and then we're gonna be back at the house talking about the PRs. All right, come on. All right, me made it to the gym. Here we are. Before going in though, I have a critical, critical question of the day, part one. It's not the question of the day, but I just have to ask. Based upon the live stream last night, which it sounds like everybody enjoyed, it went so well. That was my first ever live stream ever, ever. So here we go. If you had to choose, if you had to choose one night of the week, that works best for your schedule for tuning in to a live stream once a week, what night of the week would it be? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I would pick, for me personally, I, for my you know life schedule, family schedule, would lean toward Monday or Wednesday, but comment below with the best night of the week that would work for your schedule. It could be any night, and yes, this is going to impact and influence the future of this YouTube channel, so thank you so much for just typing one word down below in the comments, and as far as the start time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time was pretty good. We might be bumping it to 7 p.m. Mountain Time, I'm not sure yet, but all right, oh, I'm so excited. All right, here we go. Let's go lift.
Nice light lift in the uh, gym today. And again, we're just getting ready to get ready, meaning we're getting the, the legs, the ligaments, the tendons, the bones, and the heart, everything just priming the pump for when it gets real hard, you know, in about a month or so, a month and a half when the training picks up. So just getting ready to get ready, guys. All right, before we dive into the personal records, the PRs, I wanna just give you a quick update on the running group. By the way, thank you for all the name ideas that you're throwing out. Some of them are really creative, and I don't know, we might actually go with a couple of them. We'll see. I'm just trying to figure it out, and it's been a lot. So with respect to the running group, it's been a little bit of a busy two weeks, you know, with Christmas and New Year's. But in addition, editing the 1,000th vlog was a lot of work. It took a lot of time collecting all of that footage, and that set me back a little bit on the timeline of launching the running group here in Denver and on Strava. And then preparing for last night's live stream was more time than anticipated, which figuring out the technology and oh my goodness, just how to do a live stream since it was my first time. So anyway, just wanted to update you. I had talked about launching this running group this week and it's probably not gonna happen this week. I'm, I'm literally working on it tonight Back once I go back inside, but I just wanted to update you. I have not forgotten. It's just a little delayed at the moment. So Okay, let's dive into the topic of today, which is probably why you are here on this vlog, PRs and personal records. I wanted to talk about this topic for a while. First of all, quite a few of you ask me this question, like what is my mile PR, 5K PR? And right now I am approaching this topic not as an opportunity to brag, but rather as an opportunity to build a baseline for 2019 goals. And some of you mentioned a couple days ago when I asked right before the new year, like what are your running goals for 2019? A couple of you listed uh, times that you want to hit and that's amazing. So for me, I probably will not like I'll probably never break my 5K PR, but I never say never, right? But knowing my PRs, it's good to have that baseline, which does impact your training schedule, specifically your workouts and your anaerobic workouts. So anyway, when I'm communicating my PRs to you, it's not to brag, it's simply to communicate to you my baseline of what are my strengths? Remember, that's a big thing for me, like know your strengths and that will impact your peak races that you choose moving forward, whether it's, you know, the 800 meter, whether it's the, the 10K or the 50K or the 100 miler, like whatever your strengths might be. All right, enough of that. Here we go, diving in. 800 meters, I so 400 meters, I have no clue. I, it's a little too short for me. 800 meters, I have not raced a, an 800 meter since uh, high school. I did not break two minutes, kind of broke my heart in high school, went 204, was pretty close, 204 for high school. That was, you know, a decent time, not an amazing time, but a decent time. And maybe you're still trying to break two minutes in the 800, go for it, get it. It's like, oh, I love the eight, nothing. There is no better track race than the four by 800, by the way, as far as a relay race, in my humble opinion. Okay, 204 for the 800. Uh, 1600 or the mile, uh, 421, ran that in college at the University of Colorado, 421, and then jumping up to, so pretty good, not bad, uh, jumping up to the 5K, and this is where things got really hard in college, and where I ran under Mark Wetmore. Uh, basically, I ran, I ran 1446 in college, which is a pretty good time, but I had a lot of injuries in college, a lot of injuries. And I think, I like to believe that if I would have been close to injury free at CU, that I could have approached breaking 14 minutes. I actually, I really do think that based on workouts that I did and even just uh, my teammates that I ran with and what they ended up running and what I could run with them uh, at the cross country, at, at sorry, at the 10K distance. So anyway, 1446 for the 5K. And just so you know, for all the high schoolers out there that are dreaming about getting faster, I went, okay, you ready for this? I went from 1627 in high school for a 5K, 1627 at elevation to 1446. All right, all right, just putting it in per into perspective, like if you dream and you work hard, you can, you can get faster. All right, jumping up to the 10K, this is where I'm pretty proud of this time and basically, Again, back to the injuries, I raced one 10K in college on the track 
at sea level, 110K. And I don't even, I think I ran like 30, 30 or 31 flat in humid, humid conditions. But then, and then I was injured so much I could not race any more 10Ks. So then the next cross country season, I ran 30 minutes and 10 seconds at elevation on a cross country course. 30 minutes and 10 seconds. I almost broke 30 minutes for my 10K and then I never had another opportunity because of injuries to try and beat that. I'm really proud of that time given that it was a cross country course at elevation and who knows, I don't know, maybe someday I could approach that again. I don't know, maybe this year, we'll see. Just gotta keep dreaming and keep, keep fighting. All right, jumping up to the half marathon. I ran a 117 uh, eight years ago after college out of shape at elevation totally out of shape I bonked at like 10 miles real bad ended up running one an hour and 17 minutes for a half marathon and then three months ago here in Denver in that vlog upper right hand corner I solo um, at elevation on kind of a rolly course with some turns I ran 111 flat 111 and I was only running 40 to 50 miles a week and I had basically done zero speed training leading up to that time trial and I, I, it was solo nobody else was around it was just me and the pavement baby and I ran 111 now I had had a great year uh, of base training of aerobic base training you know I, I'm a big fan of that before adding speed and so that's why I'm interested if I can run 111 solo at elevation on kind of a rolly turny course I'm just wondering like, hmm, maybe I should put the 100 mile distance on hold for a little bit and focus on the marathon, the speed stuff. You know, I, you know, I'm putting the marathon in the speed category because I have been uh, thinking more along the lines of doing ultra racing, ultra marathons. It's fascinating. So those are my PRs and as far as my marathon PR, who knows? I've never done one. I've never raced a marathon. I've done 25 milers on, on the trails and I've done 50 Ks, never a marathon. So that's why I'm so excited about 2019 and the goals that I have set. And yes, okay, the Grandma's Marathon. Why am I thinking the Grandma's Marathon? Just so you know, because some of you have pointed out that some of you think that it's maybe not a fast, fast course, and but if, if you go back and you look at the USATF uh, website, quite a few guys are qualifying for the Olympic trials and the marathon on that course. So that's one reason I'm interested in it. And basically it does lose elevation overall on the course. I, it sounds like there's a hill at mile 22-ish or 20-ish. I forget the name of that hill. Uh, but anyway, like it, it looks, it's good competition. It's at sea level. Uh, quite a few guys use that race for uh, getting their Olympic trials uh, qualifying time, which means there's going to be good competition to pull me along. So that's why I'm thinking grandmas, and it gives me plenty of time to have an incredible aerobic base before, because it's in June. Anyway, I'm still looking. In fact, I'm going inside here in a little bit to uh, send my running resume to the race director to see if I can get into the elite field. We'll just see. We'll see, ladies and gentlemen. All right. The keyword, of course, PR. Well, it's not really a word. Two letters, PR, down below in the comments. And yes, what are your PRs? That's the question of the day. What are your PRs? And listen, if you if your PR is 30 minutes in the 5K, high five, high five. Like, no, it doesn't matter. Like, you're racing your own personal goals, right? We're pushing ourselves in our own ways. And there are so many viewers that are brand new to running. Like, I cannot imagine. I've been running for 20 years. I feel fortunate for that. But... There's so many of you that have just discovered running in your 50s and you're watching, the, like I know you're doing it because you're commenting and letting me know like I'm 50 years old and I just discovered running, like that's amazing and maybe your PR for the 5K is, you know, 35 minutes and that is just fine. So what are your PRs? Thank you for commenting, thank you for watching and that is today's vlog. Really enjoyed my Vimero 14 ride for the second run of 2019 and uh, yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a great day. I will see you back here. Thank you again for chiming in to the question about the live stream day moving forward. I'm intrigued to hear your comments down below on that as well. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.